guys, Samantha from Jessima Tutorials here and today I'm going to be doing a review on PBO paints. So I've got two types of PBO paints. I've got the prism ones which I am showing you here and I've got the moon ones which I'll be showing here. And so you can see that they have two different effects. Personally I prefer the prism ones best but I really like the moon ones as well. So before we start with the actual review, there are a few things that you might want to know before you start using the PBO paints. So the first thing, I'll just move this out of the way for you, is you should always mix your PBO paints before you use them. So here's what it looks like once it's cured. And I'll just open this up. And here's what it looks like before you've mixed it. So I'll just brighten this up so you can see exactly what's going on inside that pot. You should always mix it before you use it so you can see that we don't have much mica powders in there. And then I'll go scoop at the bottom. Here you can see it, we've got a bit of a clump of mica powders right on the end of my stick there. So you need to make sure that you give this a good mix each time you want to use it. And it doesn't take that long, but you want to mix every single time. So I hope you can see that we're getting some mica particles and swirls in there. And this means that your effect will be better. If you don't mix, your effect won't be so good. So even if you leave your pot for five minutes and come back, you want to mix it again. Just because it means that your effect will appear much better. Because all of the particles that give it that shiny effect settle at the bottom. Okay. So there we are. Just going to scrape this off. There we are, so I hope you can see that there's some nice swirl thing in there. So that's a very important thing. Now, close this back up, and here's what it looks like when it's cured. So the thing is, as you can see, it's, there's quite a difference between when it's cured and when it's um, still runny, and that can pose a problem because you're not sure exactly what it's going to look like. So what you can do is you can take some of the paint and you can pour it into the top of your lid if your lid has a bezel. And even if it doesn't have a bezel, the PBO paint will sit quite happily on a flat surface. You can let it cure for 24 hours and then you'll see exactly what it's going to look like. So I find that helpful and so I hope that was a good tip. And another thing that you want to do before you start using your PBO paints is just make sure that your piece of polymer clay is completely finished before you work with the PBO paints. Because although I found that you can bake the PBO paints, the baking will make it yellow and it will also take away some of the effect so you don't really want to be baking it so you want to make sure that your piece is completely finished before you put the PBO paint on. So that's basically it for the things you need to know. Now we are going to go into the problems. So the first problem I found is that the PBO paint when you're working in large amounts over large surfaces like here this was covered completely in PBO paint it will cause your piece to bend. So this piece that I'm holding over here before I put the PBO paint on was completely flat and then I put the PBO paint on and as the PBO paint's cured it slowly domed the piece. So you can see that there's a curve. And that can be seen as a good thing or a bad thing but if you didn't intend your piece to dome then you're not going to like it. So you can see that we've got quite a bit of a dome here and that's just something that the PBO paint tends to do and it's not just on the thin pieces so this one's fairly thin but it's not too thin here's one that was pretty thick and you can see that it has also domed it slightly so if you're working in large amounts of PBO paints over large surfaces your piece can tend to dome so that's just something that you might want to look out for then another thing to think about is you need space for your PBO paints to cure if you want the blooms like you get here, this was the prism paints and this was also the prism paints, you can see that in the large area you get the effect. In a small area in the, each of these things you can see that we have slight um, cells have formed but not as much. So I'll bring up this so you can see the difference. So this one looks fine but it's not as interesting as this so you just want to keep that in mind when you are working and you don't want to be using it in tiny little veins like this so here you can see that we have absolutely none of the blooms so 
that's a little disappointing, but it's just something that comes with the PBO paints. Okay, so another bad thing is that you can bake the PBO paints, but you will end up yellowing them. So I highly recommend using them after your piece is completely finished like I mentioned before but if you want to bake them or have to bake them you can but there will be a color change your paint will take on a yellow tint okay and then another thing that I found is that the PBA paints don't cure to a rock hard finish on the polymer clay so they are safe I've done a bit of testing and they haven't reacted with the polymer clay and I know that a lot of you guys have been using the PBA paints and you guys haven't had trouble so it's it's safe for polymer clay but it doesn't cure into a rock hard finish so you do want to do something that is going to uh, protect it so what I've done is I've put resin over this one so it gives it a hard finish but if this was just completely um, exposed and we didn't have the resin over it if I put my nail to it I would nick it and I could possibly pick it off the back so you just need to make sure that you give it a protected surface or you just want to protect it so things like ferrothane aren't going to work you want to give it a nice hard finish like resin okay and then the last and probably most obvious problem with PPO paints is they're relatively expensive for what they are so this bottle over here there's not that much paint in it and this can cost 10 US dollars or more so the paints are quite expensive so you if you don't know what you want to make with them I don't really recommend buying them at full price if you can find them on special then I do recommend getting them so this one I actually bought on special off of happy things for I think it was around five dollars maybe less so you can, if you can get them at like half price or lower then I recommend getting a few and trying them out but full price, I don't think they're worth it. So that's basically all the problems. Now we are going to go over the good things. So the first thing that I really like are the effects that you get. So as I showed before, you get these two different PBA paint effects. Now there's another one, but it's rather plain. I can't remember what the name was, but it basically looks like normal paint. So it's not really worth it. So this one is the prism one, which is the one that I like the best. And then this one is the moon one, where if you put it in a bead, you can get a cool cratered look. So it's not as dramatic as this effect, but it's still pretty cool. And another thing is you can mix these PPO paints together, so you don't have to just stick with the prisms or the moons. You can mix the two together to create more interesting effects. Another thing is it takes 24 hours to cure which means that you have a long time to work with it. So here, I let the PPO paint cure for about an hour till it was at a really tacky stage, so it was going to hold its shape. And then what I did is I went and swirled the paint. So I'll show this bead in a future tutorial. I might mess with the design a little bit because this was actually a test, so you can see the back over here is not that interesting or good. But I will be showing you how to create these cool hurricane effects so you can play with it once it's even once it's not completely liquidy because like resin it will take about 24 hours to cure which is a really good thing and well you guys might find that the curve in the piece is a downside I actually tend to like it for some reason and that's just a personal thing so I like the curve but you need to plan beforehand to make sure that your piece was supposed to be curved. Okay, and then another good thing is it comes in so many really nice colours. So here's just some of them. And you can see that the colours are really interesting and really vibrant. And so I, I really like the colours that they come in. And then another thing is you don't need a bezel for these paints. So like I said before, this one was completely flat when I first started, so the PBO, so if it was normal paint, it could have run over the sides over here. But the PBO paint actually tends to form almost like a dome while it's curing. But once it's cured, it's flat. But while it's curing, it will form almost like a dome, like resin. So this paint is actually surprisingly similar to resin in many ways. Like if you bake it, it will yellow, just like you would resin. 
and it will form a dome and hold surface tension just like resin so and it takes 24 hours to cure like resin as well so it's quite interesting so I'm not quite sure about the paint yet I like what I have found so far there are a few problems that I need to work around but so far I really like them I'm not sure about the price and whether I would recommend them at full price yet because I haven't played around with them enough yet but I'll still play around with them there's lots of testing to be done still and so I'll play around with them and see what I can find and there will be future tutorials on the PBA paint because I'm really enjoying working with it so you can look forward to those tutorials and you can see more experiments in the future as well so I do hope this tutorial was helpful to you and if it was please do let me know in the comments as that's always helpful to me and please do check out my website jasimotutorials.com I have early videos on there up to two weeks before they actually go on YouTube so you can get early access to all of my YouTube videos and I'll also be starting to put up videos on my website that actually aren't going to be on YouTube so be sure to go and check there often for new tutorials that aren't on YouTube and as always I hope to see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.